Here I finally am with the LA-174. It's been requested so much, I don't. I just lost count. Finally flew it. Uh, the differences between the LA-15 and LA-174. LA-174 is slightly lighter and the elevator compresses more. Other than that, next to the visual differences, they are the same plane. And this turned out to be an absolute nil biter of a match. So if you do watch my videos to get better at the game, well, I assume you do because I'm not the most entertaining guy in terms of commentary, then I actually advise you to watch the whole thing. I know it's a long one and I will put some uh, timestamps in the description as well to make navigating a little bit easier. But there's a lot of things in here that are very helpful and they're not plane specific, so you can just apply them to general gameplay. This is um, actually my first game in the LA-174 and Razor took the Yak 30. I was like, nah, there's no way we're going to get up here to 9.3. Yeah, 9.3 match, of course. The snail wasn't with me today. It is a lot of uh, bad aim on both ends, because while well, it's the first game of this thing, and my aim with the 23s is not that good to begin with, and the enemy is flying MiG. And when you fly a MiG versus a squirrely plane, it can be rather annoying if you're not too experienced with the guns. I don't want to spoil too much, because this is a pretty long game with a very little downtime, but you will see plenty of that coming up. Razor landed, he used min fuel, he's gonna get strafed very soon here. And at this point it's basically 3v6, uh, the Vautour being well a Vautour and Razor's about to get strafed. So 2v6, yes, but the Vautour isn't gonna do very much. And the LA-174 isn't very fast as it can rip at around 950 kph. They have full 9.0s, 9.3 matchup as well, which makes it a relatively tedious fight. So I want to drop down on the, the Sabres first because the Sabres have 50 kills which makes them very easy to aim and this thing relies on people missing you basically you have to, you're very squirrely and a saber can keep up with that relatively easily dive on the f25 afterwards ah i compress a bit the rudder compresses as well at high speed i'm too fast i can't pull into him i also have way too much fuel he probably runs min fuel which makes it very hard for me to pull into that and he's gonna extend away and there's just no way for me that I'm going to kill him. I will catch him for a little bit. But with the acceleration around 800. He will get the upper hand. And he will start pulling away. And I can't really snipe with these guns. As well the 23 is first game as well. Uh, not a very good mix. And you will see a, a lot of me missing. But the enemy is doing the same thing. So that kind of evened uh, the ground a bit. I'm trying to catch him here. I'm trying to just out accelerate him. I just can't keep up with him. And there it goes. Red lines. Don't want to deal with that. A5 coming head on. Try to pop some shots off here. Get a crit. Very lucky. He's going to go RTB. And I'm going to be trying to chase up after this F25. Because I do have quite a bit better acceleration in the F25. And I'm a little bit more maneuverable. In a dogfight I will absolutely slap this guy. But he has to commit. And that's something he's not very willing to do. I think I caught him off guard. Because he turned right in front of me. He goes on the defensive the moment I shoot my rounds. He's very busy looking behind himself to look at me and he doesn't look in front of him and flies right into the ground. Thank you very much. And that's uh, very helpful for me. I don't mind people crashing because it saves me a lot of ammo. And now I am going to go to the airfield. There's a MiG-17 spotted and I know that the A5s are to be as well and then I see the guy on my 6. Uh, not too uh, great, I have to admit. Because I have to deal with a MiG-17 on my 6 as well as a MiG-17 coming towards me. So what I want to do is go take this MiG-17 head on. Because the MiG-17 behind me will take a little bit to catch up. And if I start dogfighting him now, the other MiG-17 comes in with a lot of speed. And I don't want to deal with that. So I'd rather dogfight him at once than dogfight one. And then the second one coming in with a lot of energy. Still, dogfight a MiG-17 is not the best thing you want to do in this plane. But, uh, sadly, I will have to do it anyway. I'm waiting for them to drop out of the clouds. I'm just going to fly back to my airfield. Not to camp, I'm not going to go back to base to camp on my airfield, but I want to put as much distance between the F5s and whatever is on their runway and me as possible, so I can deal with the MiG-17 in the background. Here comes the missile, waiting for it, MiG-17 AS, of course has two missiles, not sure if he has two, I don't know which one fires first, well I will see that very soon in the gameplay, or in the on his wingtips. I go on to the defensive here, he's a MiG-17, he doesn't roll too well. I turn relatively the same, he has a lot more energy than me, so all I have to do is just roll out of his guns and he will end up in front of me eventually. Pull right into his wing, get a hit, welcome to the world of 23s, they do absolutely nothing most of the time. I'm running air targets, AP also works somewhat, but they are almost 80 meters a second slower, which is something I don't find worth it. The other MiG-17 is coming back to me, and same deal as before. I'm st sticking on the one on the right for a little bit so I can take this guy head on and then maybe try the 2v1. 
hit yet again. It's three consecutive hits. A5 gets killed by the Vautour. As he's landing, Vautour dies to AA. I ripped my flap off, that's something I will need, so that was very unfortunate. Diving on the MiG-17, if this was any other plane I would have hit him there. But I can't use the 23, so I'm just gonna stay on him. Get as close as I can and try to hose him down. I want to stick on him, I want to kill one fast. There's an F5 coming in and I don't favor a 1v3 at this position. MiG-17 flying right underneath me, not too sure what he is doing, but he's presenting himself. So I will take him out here. Luckily it blasted a steal of him one shot. And now I can go back to happily dodging the shells. I turn the 2v1 into a 1v1 and it instantly becomes a 1v2 again. Because the F5 comes in with a lot of speed. And again I'm slower than the MiG-17 so I can stay out of his guns for a little bit. As long as he doesn't air break me I should be alright. He's air breaking me now or at least total dropping me. Trying to stay out of his guns just underneath it. Or just above it I should say. You can pull him out of guns. Kind of save me there. I really want to be wary of the F5 now. Pulled just out of his guns. Got quite lucky there. But he came out of the clouds. He's turned a bit. Uh, he turned around a bit earlier than expected. And now I want to keep note on the F5. He's flying away from me. He's three kilometers away. The MiG-17 is right in front of me. If I can aim, I can kill him right here. I don't have much ammo and I have quite a few of people to kill, so I don't want to spray. Even though time is not of the essence right here. F5 is coming in. Fly straight for a little bit. Blast him out of the air. F5 on my 6 and I need him in front of me ASAP. I'm quite low so I can turn it below him. He can follow that. And they're literally just queuing up. New guy comes in. Dispatch of the old one. And it's back to the 2v1 again. And now this is the last 2v1 of the game. Two F5s. He is hosing me like mad. I already know he lost quite a bit of ammo there. So I'm expecting his aim to be relatively poor. He did just RTB so he has a lot of ammo. And the old guy above me didn't. So I might be able to outfield him. I'm not too sure at this point. But it's going to be a tense and a long game. It's going to be a lot of running away. Which is kind of a funny thing to say. Considering they're way faster than me. But uh, they are going to be very cautious. Let's put it that way. They Neither of them wanted to stick on me. Which is what eventually what lost them the game. There's two of them. One of them just had to air break me. Just had to engage me. And the other guy would have been a easily been able to just pick me up. it begins and it's a lot of this they both engage at the same time i dodge i extend away to get some energy because i don't want to get depleted completely i want to go at least 500 of course i want to go as fast as i can but you know the acceleration of the f5 makes it relatively impossible for me to get my speed back without them staying one of my eyes f5 is turning right in front of me it oh, turns me i think he's air braking i'm not too sure he's at least a little bit slower than me but it, of course he's a very low fuel so it might just be that he uh, just outturns me that way. Touch the head on yet again. I'm using my roll rate. He has to turn around so I'm just going to chase this guy. So I have the most amount of time to get some energy back. Sicily coming into play as well with the overheat. And I really wish I had a flap right here. Unfortunate. Expecting him to go head on last second. He doesn't. So I try to pull into him. But I couldn't turn hard enough. And he didn't get into my gun. F5 coming back. Dodge the shells yet again. Try to pull back into him. Maybe it's forced a dogfight. Maybe get him to get into my guns. I'm not going to pull after him. Because I will stall right in the guns of the second guy. Here comes the missile. I was waiting for it. He only has one left now. He just shot the first one. This time I do know for sure that it's the first missile. He's a lot slower than me. Faster than me. So I can just roll out. He has to commit. He doesn't. And I can fly away again. I'm only going 500. And I'm not liking it at all. I'm low though. Which makes it pretty hard for them to get a guns on me. I'm just trying to point towards them. As much as I can in these close quarters fight. So they can't really pull a solution on me. When I get both of them on my 6 at the same time. I'm just going to have a problem. So I want to make sure that I either can dogfight one. So I push ahead on them. Or I get one on me. So I can dogfight it. But two of them at the same time gonna be a problem that problem here is that they're playing too passively they're scared of me for some reason i'm an la174 i'm an apono playing you're in one of the best 9.3s and you outperform me in basically every metric except for roll rate and maybe some style characteristics but the mig 17 f or the f5 is absolutely bro broken not in a overpowered kind of way but versus this thing i am i have very little options 
Here we go again. Dodge his shells. He's gonna pull right in front of me. I miss. And I get a hit. Very sad. He looks to be somewhat damaged, but not really. Getting low on ammo too. 78 rounds. The F5 seems to be going back to base. At least I'm hoping he is. So I turn around as fast as I can because I'm getting kind of low on fuel. I don't want to use my web too much because of the overheat. And I naturally kind of gravitated towards the base. And again, I'm not trying to the, the hawk the base AA here. And that's why I turn off of it because I think if you have to use base AA to win the game, you have already lost. Don't be a cunt and just take the L. You don't have to be a dick. Like if you are in a worse plane and you can't fight them, give up. Or do it like this and try to win and die trying. But don't sit on the base just to, to so that AA can do your job. Of course, I'm doing it, but they're kind of forcing me over here. I'm trying to stay away from the airfield, but they're pushing me right into it. And I'm trying to fly away from it right now, as you can see. F5 is slightly damaged, but I'm not too sure what I damaged. There's no oil leak or whatever, but he's breaking off, which is good. Probably thought he was damaged badly. I didn't actually check what the damage was. It only set the flap. It could be a lot more. But it's good. Back to the 1v1. It's still an F5. So I'm still in a very big disadvantage. And I can't actually see him. And he probably still has a missile left. But I'm not too sure on that. Here he comes. Look at the speed difference. Yet again. Gonna pick up some speed in this dive. Go kind of towards him. So I can pull into him easier. Here he comes again, going low to the ground so he can pull the shot. And I'm going to chase him again. Hoping he would commit, but they don't. They are too passive. And this is a problem that I see quite a bit lately. People are too scared to stick on certain planes. If you're in the F5, and this is again, you need to know your planes, which is a very big theme on my channel. If you know the planes, you know exactly what you can and can't do. When you're in the F5, you can easily, you can boom a zoomie. You can outturn me, you can out energy me, you can do a lot of things. They're not taking advantage of that. Instead, he doesn't really know what to do, probably because he hasn't fought the LA-174 a lot, because he has an F5 pilot. It might be that he never faced one before, because he bought the first top tier, which is why it's a problem that you buy top tier premiums. Most of you already know this, and most of you are fine, because most of you already have some jets when they buy a premium pack, or do something like that. But there are people that are really new to the game and that buy stuff like that. And it's not a good idea. You don't know what to do. You don't know what your strengths are. And you, you're too scared to fight. Which eventually is going to diminish your advantages. He has all the advantages, but he doesn't use them. And that ultimately gives me the advantage, ironically enough. I want to land here because I only have two minutes of fuel left. Trottle drop. I want my flat back too and, my, and some ammo. Looks like he was RTB. I'm not too sure. I'm just going to risk it for the biscuit. Hoping he doesn't see my, my dot. I was hoping he wouldn't strafe me. He recognized me as well. 550. Get the air brake out. The air brake doesn't do anything in this thing. Well, it does something. But, you know. <laughs> it doesn't do a lot. Luckily, the acceleration is relatively good. And the retention is relatively good as well. Which makes it rather easy to at least keep your speed up in a fight. Makes it a problem though if you want to slow down. Yeah, and there he comes. Trouble back up. Only going 330. Not too good. Still have my air brake out. Didn't even notice it. It was so dinky. Very low to the ground. Going well diagonal from him. Making it a very hard shot. Of course I'm slow. So he still could have easily hit me there. But I kind of squirmed out of it. I want to say it was me dodging him. But him not being able to aim that shot. Of course helped. I was only going 300. So yes, again, I got relatively lucky there. But I need luck. I'm fighting 9.3s in my 8.0 plane. It's my first game in it. And I'm not even spayed it yet. Mostly though. Don't get me wrong. I'm not stuck. I did GE some mods. So I GE the compressor, the belts and the guns. As well as, the, I believe, the wing repair. I'm actually going to look it right now. Just a second. Multitasking to the max. I know what's happening in the background anyway. Yeah, the compressor, the boosters, the fuselage, and the guns, and the wing repair. I, did, I almost had the engine. At this. Oh, I had the engine as well. I only didn't have the cover and the airframe. I believe. Or at least not the cover. Airframe, if the airframe was mandatory, I had it. Otherwise, I didn't. 
Yes, I'm hogging my base now, but I have a minute of fuel left. There we go, caps lock, spam. Asking him to fight me, I'm getting a bit frustrated here. Because he's just so passive. And I get it, you're trying to boom a zoom and you're trying to use the advantages of your plane. The thing is, you have all the advantages, so you can just fight me. He says, you'll death kill me, indicating that he's probably either scared, he, is, he doesn't know what to do versus me. I'm very frustrated at this point because he just doesn't want to fight me even though he has all the cards. And you might say, he's just playing it right, he doesn't give you any chances. And that's true. He's giving me zero chances flying like this. The problem is he's also giving himself zero chances, ending it in a stalemate. And running people out of fuel, in my opinion, is one of the most boring things to do in this game. But it's actually going to happen. Which one will end out of fuel first? Is up to you to decide. And at this point, 15 seconds of fuel. Kind of sad. <laughs> like I, I, the airfield is right there, but I know that if I land, he will just strafe me. Here he comes. I think he's gonna dogfight me, and he is. For a little bit, I miss. Had to shoot there. I don't have any ammo. I don't have any fuel. I need to kill him right here, and I only have three seconds of fuel left, and I have to RTP. I'm just gonna stick the landing. Really hoping here that he doesn't kill me because I want to fight this 2v1. I want to try to win it. I say I'm out of fuel. Maybe he'll have some... Uh, he thinks about not strafing me unlike the first time. And he actually doesn't. So thanks a lot for that. Also, if you have the idea... If you're watching this, I really hope you are watching this as well as the other guy. I'm not trying to rip on you. I'm just being very critical here. And I think you could have very easily killed me. Even if you want to say that I will be better than you. It's highly irrelevant considering the planes. You have a much better plane and that is just only so much a person can do. Say you're fighting a 163 in your P80. And you can say the P80 is the best pilot in the game. If a guy is not very good in the 163 but he knows some little bit about his planes. What he can and can't do. He will win period. That's just nothing he can do. And it's a bit of the same scenario right here. Luckily you two had very poor aim. But same goes for me so it was a bit even. But thank you all for, for sticking at least and not, well, you were playing very passively, but there's inherently nothing wrong with it. But I do think that you could have easily, well, just killed me. If you had ganked me, if one of you had air broke me, if one of you had like stuck to the fight and the other guy would boom a zoomy, there would have been zero things I could have done. If it's 1v1, all you would that do in that scenario is just be, you can be passive at the start, there's nothing wrong with that. You can drain me off my speed, you can drain me off my energy, push me low, and the moment I start, like the discrepancy of energy becomes bigger and bigger. You can get very aggressive, because when I run out of fuel, or run out of energy, there is just very little I can do. If I have 400 kilometers an hour and you're going 700 and you start looping or dogfighting me, like me being decent at the game is not gonna give me 200 kps extra. I will fall out of the air and there's just nothing I can do. So I want you to, to take that into account. Being passive, and being careful is not always the best thing. Getting aggressive at times will, well, be more cautious than being careful. But because by being very careful when you have all the cards, you then start diminishing your own advantages. You outturn me, but you only use your speed. If you use your speed, you have more energy than me coming into the fight because you go quite a bit faster than me, as you can see right here. If you then get aggressive and use your turn rate as well, you use both your advantages and right now you're only using one it's a very one dimensional thing you're not gonna get guns on because you're maintaining too much energy you have very little time on target and you're not the best with the guns as you can tell and you should know this of yourself you should know the weakness of yourself when you're flying and you can tell that your well, your aim is if your aim is poor you don't want to stay this fast forcing me slow and force me into a dogfight when you have to battle plane makes it a lot easier to kill you to kill me because so i'm going slower I'm not as squirrely and you're right on my 6 and once we both go like 300 bruh when we're both going 300 I'm starting to stall out there is just nothing I can do it doesn't matter how bad your aim is it doesn't matter in what plane I am once I am slow I am dead you will always maintain more energy than me of course it doesn't mean like if I was flying a G91 R3 for example you of course don't want to do that you don't want to give him the kill basically but against the 174 you can win you can win the fight of course, I'm, if I was running minifield, it would have been a different story, but I'm not. And I know this is very hard to tell for some people, uh, because the, you have to know the planes relatively well 
to see if someone is running Minfield compared to you or not. So, yeah, if they, they thought I was running Minfield, they played it correctly. Because you don't want to fight something or dogfight something with a lot less fuel than you. But I wasn't. I was maintaining, maintaining, maintaining. I, I kept flying, so I wasn't out of fuel. Which indicates that I'm running roughly the same load as you. And you want to use that. It's all those little things that you really want to use. If you think I'm on minfield, you don't want to dogfight me. That's fair. That's completely fair. Because you don't want to give me the kill when you have way better speed than me. If only your speed is better, boom and zoom him. Of course. By all means. I'm not telling you to, to start dogfighting zeros because you're being too passive. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you can out dogfight someone in your plane and you have more energy, use it. The longer you wait, the more time you give me to kill you. And you have the cards, so the longer it takes, the bigger the chance becomes I'm going to kill you. Or the other way around, if, if I'm doing the same thing to a slower plane, it doesn't matter. I'm just using me as an example now because I'm flying and it's easier to talk about myself than talk about the whole player base. I'm just ap applying it to this one scenario. And I know that the F5 is RTB. So what I want to do is climb slightly towards him. I know that the other guy broke off. He probably lost me. Uh, so I want to use this opportunity to go to them very quickly. I know what one of them is. So I want to use this. Trying to kill him as fast as I can. But now I know where they both are. And I'm not too sure which one I want to go for. I decided to go for this guy anyway. Because the other guy is near my airfield. And he's probably going to be there for a little bit. So what I want to do is go to the other guy that I know. He is heavier. He has more fuel because he just took off. So he will be just that little bit easier to kill. And I want to kill one guy as soon as I can. So it turns into a 1v1. There he is. I'm going to go 750 though. And that F5 is going to accelerate to 1100 very quickly. So there's a very big chance I won't be able to kill him here. I was hoping he was flying in a different direction. Or he was close to the base. Miscalculation on my part. And uh, this is going to be very... Very painful. Because I might have been able to kill him if I turned a bit earlier to him. Luckily for me, he turns into me here. He finally starts to dogfight me somewhat. But you can just tell how much faster he is. I'm cutting him off. I'm aiming in front of him. I am turning inside of his loop. And he still outruns me. Which just indicates how much faster he actually is. And you will see that the moment he straightens out, look at his difference. What am I supposed to do here? If he just keeps running. Because he can do this all day. And there is no way in hell that I'm going to catch him. He is faster. He has better acceleration. And it doesn't help that he has a much better top speed. Now I'm fighting this guy for a little bit. I'm staying on his 6. Hoping he, he panics and he turns. Very little reason for me to do this. I'm just hoping he does something. He goes up. When so someone suddenly starts dogfighting. And there's a second guy relatively near. There is something up. And I'm not falling for it. I almost did, don't get me wrong. But luckily in this case, I didn't fall for it. The F5, he starts getting aggressive. And he's doing the right thing now. He's probably getting frustrated too, because he can't kill me. So he starts realizing that they have to fight me. And it, it's, it's fun to see. Because they started off very passively. And the longer this game went on, the more they understood they have to get more aggressive. Which is a great thing. It's, uh, it's fun to see like how a boat trying to learn on the plane. Because this is my first game. They're probably the first time they're fighting this thing. I'm just trying to be as squirrely as I can. Trying to stay out of the guns. And you can tell that like they're getting aggressive. Finally, they're, they're starting a fight. And now it starts getting fun again. He didn't lead enough. He lost a little bit too much speed. And I'm just doing a flap turn at this point. I'm going to go slightly up here. As I know that if you go really slow and I can use my flaps, that I will start having the upper hand. But that's the only thing I have an upper hand in. So I want to get there first. And I don't want to just mindlessly stall myself out. The other F5 is starting to go straight now. He's going to extend. Which is the good thing to do here. Because when it's a 2v1 like this. Like I'm only going 400. What he can do right now is fly away from me. Come back in. And pin me down. Which is exactly what he's doing. And right here he does the perfect thing. He goes up. I would have killed him probably one or two turns later. But if I try to pitch up after him right now. I would be absolutely dead. By the second guy. He has full ammo. He hasn't shot even yet. Oh he did shoot. He still has at least 30 of those 37. Which is more than enough to kill me. So I go blow him again. Try to make him slow. I wanted to invert my turn there to start a reversal. But the other F5 is finally getting slow. And you can tell like the turn rate of that thing. Versus this one. Is not 
one part. Finally got a dogfight. I want to get a random, so I pull over him, hoping for him to turn back into my guns. I can get the shot there. I'm gonna go too slow too. I'm not gonna risk it. Go diagonal to him again. He shot a lot of rounds at me already. Pull in, get a crit. Second guy, I hit him. Get out of his guns. He has a bit of desync, so his guns go all over the place. Pull into him. Just didn't get the shot. Uh, nope. <laughs> I can't aim. This roller is absolutely fucking me. Go ahead on, miss. Try to get out of his guns. I'm only going 400. Not the best position to be in here. He turns back into my guns. The other guy is crit behind me. And after all of that, he still out accelerates me. He still outruns me. And he can just reset the fight. And this is how you should fight it. You can fight me and the moment it starts going south, you can extend away. Perfect. Nothing wrong with this. This is how you should fly it. And it's, again, I, I really like seeing people adapt to the situation. Of course, when I was flying, when this was happening, and the people in VT that were in the same voice call as me, know how much I was yelling, because they just kept going up, and they, they, the second stage of this fight was a lot of fun. And actually, props to you guys for adapting so well, and trying to, to learn from uh, what's happening. Could have played it a bit better, but considering you started off very passively, in those five minutes you learned a lot. If it's only versus this plane, or if it's just because you're fighting me, I don't know. Second missile coming off. Well, that's the first one, actually. But props to you guys, really. I had a very fun time doing this. Of course, it was stressful as hell. Don't get me wrong. He's crit. I was very annoyed that he survived two hits for me already. He's crit now, and I wasn't sure. I thought he was maybe engine the hit or something like that. Because he wasn't very fast. But I think he just over air broke a little bit. But I'm not too sure what I can do now. Because the boat on me again. And they're getting more aggressive, and at this point, of course, I wasn't very, very happy that they were learning. Afterwards, of course, I am, because it made for a very fun fight. But at this point, I wanted to win. I don't want the enemy to learn, I want to kill them. There we go again, Dodge just out of his rounds. Not enough lead. And some of these shots, if, I had, if they had desynced, I would have been dead. He's coming head on, we're going both very slow. He can get a shot here, so I'm gonna go for the shot. I hit him again. He's still not dead, and at this point I think I'm dead. He's getting very aggressive on me. He's right on my six, I'm going 550. Just get out of his guns. Again, he didn't lead enough. He starts to fight with me, and this is exactly the position I want to get him in. I can use my flaps. I can use this to stall to get right on top of him. If he had followed me up here, he would have died. Instead, he doesn't, and he flies away. And again, that's how you do it. Making it very hard for me to do anything. But it's fun to see you adapt so well. But enough about that. Back to the gameplay. Trying to get the snipe off. I don't have too much ammo. I think that the other F5 is dead. But of course I can't tell because he survived so many, so many hits. And there we, there we go. Can you just die? He's not dying. He doesn't want to die. Man too angry to die. He's just flying around. And now what I want to do is turn away. Try to bait him back into the dogfight. Here he comes. Give him some separation. He needs some room. I can respect that. I know how annoying it is if you try to boom a zoom someone and they keep following you even though they can't catch you. There's no reason. Give the guy some room and he will engage you a lot sooner, making the fight a lot more enjoyable for both parties and removing a lot of the frustration. And what I want to do now is I want to chase back that F5 to the airfield because I'm not going to let him repair for a third time. A second time, sorry. I just, I'm not doing it. Dodge him yet again. He's a lot faster than me. Roll underneath him. Use my roll. Let's see if he pulls into it. He actually does finally. He just dodges my shot. Very nice flying. Finally get the shot and I whiff it. I whiff it. I just can't use these 20 trees. He dodges that one. Also some poor aim on my end. But this whole <laughs> this whole game was just everyone having bad aim. It was pretty funny. But it made for a long game. So if that other MiG or the F5 had died instantly at the, at the start, this would have been a 1v1. 
And if I had just hit the first shot that I could have gotten, then this would have been a very boring game. So having bad aim actually makes for some very fun footage. Well, some people might not enjoy this because it's almost 14 minutes and I can understand why you don't want to watch all of it. And again here, he's outrunning me. I'm not going to snipe him, so I'm going to give him some room. And he comes right back. Not everyone does this, of course. Some people just like to run six kilometers away. I'm not sure what my camera tried to do right there. He, he notices that I'm right on the six, I'm a lot slower, and he just extends away. Which is the right thing to do. I again dive a little bit to get some speed, give him some separation so he can re-engage me. I'm quite far away from the airfield. And I still want to intercept the F5 going back to the base, but this guy isn't letting me. And yet again, the same maneuver, go over his gun, bait him into the fight. Roll over his plane. Roll back in. I miss again. I want to say it's my rudder. But I didn't roll in time. So that's a very ambitious rudder flick. <laughs> it's not happening. I didn't set off well enough. Set up well enough. I can get my flaps down finally. Which is something I want to happen. He's starting to air brake me I believe here. I'm getting right on him. I have 114 rounds, which is about 30 shots per gun, which isn't a lot. And I just, look at how much faster he is. And I don't want to spray him down, because I'm, I'm not too confident with these guns. So I'd rather just wait for a better shot, than waste my ammo here and lose because of it. He's 200 meters in front of me, he's pulling a lot of bullshit. He's air braking finally. Only yet again get another hit. I'm just I'm just screaming at this point. The rudder is pretty poor at higher speeds, which is why I missed that second shot. If you start cancel rolling in front of this thing, it's very hard for me to get a shot. But he just over air broke me completely. If he had just pulled straight, he probably would have been able to outdo fight me. But he wasted a lot of speed in that deflection and the uh, the air brake. And he's trying to go vertical right afterwards. Uh, that's not happening. I can drop my flaps now, but in my speed zone. And you're slower than me, so you really want to run away from me at this point. But he doesn't have the energy to do so. I was hoping for him to come back up with me. But again, very good read, and he extends away. And yet again, I didn't kill him. I just I just couldn't kill him. I think he is uh, almost out of fuel because he was afterburning all the time. I hit him. And he gave me the kill. I think he's almost out of fuel. He probably just he just gave he just gave up. He sincerely just gave up. But I think he should have died anyway. So I think that was fair. I missed even that. Very nice. Set him on fire. Thanks for the fight. GG dude. Actually GG. And thank you for not strafing me. And actually accept accepting the defeat. Well not really accepting defeat because he could have killed me. And it sounds really cocky to say accept defeat. But that's not what I meant. And now it's 1v1. I only have 3 minutes of fuel left. And thank you for enjoying my videos. And the reason I make videos is because people like you. That give me good fights. So otherwise I wouldn't have uploaded this. If you and the other guy weren't there. I wouldn't have uploaded this video. Dodge him. I say I'm dead. It's also a little bit to bait the other guy into fighting me. Because I only have two and a half minutes of fuel left. And I want to fight him ASAP. Because if I have to go RTB. If he starts flying passively versus me. I'm done. Straight up done. So I want to give him uh, the, the sense of me almost being dead. One for one for the content. Will he do it though? I kind of guilt trip him here. Because I hit him and crit him already. This is a bit of a psychological warfare, of course. And you can tell he's not really catching me. And when I saw that, I instantly turned into him. I didn't want him to, to get any speed whatsoever. Of course, he's going to get plenty of speed in me turning and him diving on me. But I wanted him to 1v1 me. Two minutes of fuel left. He has 20 minutes. I'm a lot lighter than him. And this time, I do have to transition to 1v1. And he shouldn't have dogfought me. But kudos for doing it anyway. And now you can tell that I'm just turning into him without a problem. He rolls back into my guns. And a next G should have still off. And that's game. This is one of the longest fights I've ever played. And not just longest in terms of chasing a bomber. This was an actual 40 minute fight. Well, the first 5 minutes were climbing and me taking the shit. 
That's the best shit I've ever taken. Hope you enjoyed it. I will cover the R2, Y2, V1, V2 and V3 relatively soon. Got a lot of 7 kill games and even a 9 kill game. So look forward to that. And that's it for now. Sorry for my absence. I just finished my exams. So the frequency of videos is going to go up slightly. If I can get the motivation. Hope you enjoyed it yet again. And I will see you all very soon.